Five. I wanted to go through some stuff. Um, the uh, State of the Union on uh, President Biden, particularly in terms of Social Security, and then I'm going to be on here answering questions, all things Social Security, uh, Medicare, Medicaid. Um, so if you have any questions, make sure you ask. Uh, if you're watching this uh, as a recording later, um, I do these on a regular basis. Uh, it's uh, it's Friday. I usually do them on a Thursday. I did Thursday. I did did one yesterday. Uh, recently, there's been so many questions. I've been doing a lot of these. So here I am again. One day y'all are get tired of seeing me, but until that day comes, here I am. So all right. So let's let's get into uh, the State of the Union. Uh, some of the ideas. <clears throat> on uh, saving social security let's uh, let's pull up uh what uh what the president said uh, first thing is um that they wanted he wants to protect social security um that's you know there's been several attempts you know again i worked for the social security administration for a couple of decades and uh you know we weren't supposed to be political or make any uh, you know comments or anything like that uh, officially or publicly you know, our, our comment was no comment on, on those type of things. Um, but since I am no longer a an employee of the Social Security Administration, I can say whatever I want. Um, so there are several proposals out there. Um, definitely something needs to be done. You know, uh, kicking the ball down the street is, yeah, is, is definitely... Well, they say within about 10 years, uh, they're going to have to make some cuts, around 30% cuts into Social Security. And, uh, you know, there's there's millions of Americans that are barely, you know, scraping by now. They go, what, 50% or so just live on Social Security alone. That's why I did that. Uh, um, oh, got a little cracking sound there. I'm doing TikTok live right next to me. So I wonder if it's the first time I've done that one. Maybe, uh, maybe that's it. A little bit better, maybe. Maybe it's just cracking in my voice because I'm getting old. Maybe that's uh, that might be it. A little bit better. Um, so uh, yeah, um, um, yeah. Something needs to get done. Uh, too many people are depending on Social Security only, and to cut is definitely not the answer. Um, thank you. You do. You're great. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. So let's see here. Um, so Biden, there, there's obviously one of the proposals out there is to increase the retirement age. And if you watched any of my videos, I always have yesterday, the, you know, for, for people that have, you know, kind of cushy jobs like I do right now, you know, obviously when I was young in the Marine Corps, that wasn't a cushy job, but, uh, you know, my, my father was a long distance or my mother was a waitress in a, you know, more in a breakfast diner, you know, they can't, you know, they can't work until, you know, 67, 68, 69, their body just, you know, gives out. So raising the retirement age like that, uh, it, you know, it's already been raised enough. It was raised in the 1980s. Um, definitely 67 is, uh, yeah, it's, that's, you know, luckily we can retire early at a do that is kind of an easy, easy fix and because they don't like Social Security anyway. So they've been trying to give Social Security over to Wall Street and say, hey, since the government is bad at investments, let's give it to, uh, you know, the, the, the hedge funds and the private equity firms on uh, in Wall Street. We'll let them do it because they are really good at managing people's money, right? <laughs> and taking just humongous cuts uh, for commissions. Um, I've seen several estimates changed over the years, but uh, yeah, in terms of administrative fees um, for the administration of the Social Security Trust Fund and you know, um, uh, you know, claims, uh, processing claims and the field offices throughout the country, we're looking at, you know, probably, uh, um, I've seen what about a 1% or so, um, yeah, uh, uh, overhead in terms of administrating. So if you give, my personal opinion, if you give all that money to Social Security to have them do everything, or give all that money to Wall Street to have them do everything, then 
yeah, I don't think it's going to cost 1%. You know, maybe the CEO themselves might take 1% as a commission because they think they're so awesome. But anyway. All right, David, uh, steal from our funds, then make it harder for us to withdraw when we need it the most. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's just too many people. So, you know, we're cutting benefits. And there's uh, another proposal out there that I've seen recently on a video where, you know, they um, it gets kind of complicated, but uh, Social Security... Um, you know, the average, how they determine what your benefit amount is based on a wage index and how once you re start receiving Social Security benefits, it's based on kind of the, uh, a, you know, a basket of, you know, an index of, you know, um, cost of living, you know, the cost of living, it's based on another um, package of goods, um, you know, how much it costs to actually live that, you know, I think it should change. I, I, in my personal opinion, the COLA increase for the last 10 or 20 years should have been 2% more, um, yeah, per year than it was calculated. So, so there's that. But uh, yeah, in some people have some kind of complicated, you know, solution that they say, well, you know, we need to change it to all, you know, wages, base it on wages, you know, your COLA increase will based on wages, and that will reduce it by 1% over the next, you know, 20, 30, 40 years, and that'll solve a majority of the, you know, things, and, you know, just reducing it, um, the growth going forward is not necessarily a cut, and uh, <laughs> tell that to the people that, they, you know, the 50% of people that, uh, you know, are barely scraping by, you know, 1% less next year and 1% next last next year and stuff. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely, you know, tell that, you know, to the, to, to the billionaire investors. Oh yeah, we're just going to give you a, you know, we've got this other, you know, investment idea for you, but it's 1% less. So it's not really a cut. You're not, you're not losing anything. Yes, you are losing anything. Yeah, they're going to. So anyway, um, Oh, definitely ought to knock my voice, huh? Uh, I'm using the same thing I've been using. What's going on? I get a little bit closer here. All right. Yeah, usually uh, I, YouTube is pushing this vertical thing, so you can't. I can't do it. I can't have a mic or anything. Um, it has to be direct. So, all right. Well, uh, all right, Gary had a phone interview and with two young kids and their mom getting child and care, I thought it would be at the family max, but it isn't. How is it figured? Um, okay, great. Thanks, James. I appreciate it. We got a little bit closer. Um, so, yeah, it should, it should be family. Well, if you, if you got to that number, um, it's not necessarily that they're going to give you the family max. The kids and everybody's only entitled to so much. And if that amount, you know, let's say, you know, you've got 20 kids and they all get, you know, 50% of your PIA, then, you know, they're not going to get, let's say, you know, $10,000 a month. Then that bumps up against the family max. But if you have a couple of kids and uh, auxiliary child in care, and they're all going to get, you know, the 50% and it doesn't come up to the family max, then the family max is not an issue. You know, if you throw some more kids in there, then it'll limit it to the family max. Yeah. Don't the kids and their mom get 50% of your full benefit? Yes. So, yes, they get uh, 50% um, of your PIA. So not your, I don't know if you file late and get her and getting DRCs, but they don't get DRCs. They get 50% of your PIA. So if you, if you think the calculations are incorrect, um, then, and it, you've just got that decision, then definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. Child file at 62. Yeah. Then, so it, it's 50% of your PIA. So definitely check it out. Oh, okay. Hey, Cadillac Jack. Welcome back. Uh, Dr. Ware watched your spousal part one going to do split strategy, going to attempt filing online. Appreciate y'all. Oh, okay. I appreciate it. Yeah. Get a, buy me a coffee or a beer or whatever. I appreciate it. If you can, no sweats. Um, yeah, I've got the other, the other video part 
two, I'm going to upload that here in a bit. I did all the editing yesterday. Um, my editing sucks. <laughs> I do all the editing myself and, uh, you know, everybody else out there has a team of, you know, people that uh, do all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, it's just, it's just me and my son. Um, yeah. So if you call and uh, somebody picks up, that's my son. Yeah. So just, uh, it's just me and him. We're, we're a two man team. Um, uh, but we, you know, we have put together, uh, teams of other people, um, that if you need help with Medicare, we've got a separate team that does that. If you need help with the burial insurance, we've got a team that do that, does that. We've uh, hooked up with an organization that does estate planning. So if you need, uh, you know, wills and trusts and stuff like that, anytime you say estate planning, you think, you know, oh, there's, you know, estate, you know, millionaire, billionaires or something. But yeah, everybody needs estate planning, you know, at the very, very basic, uh, you know, will. Because, you know, again, the, the, why am I putting all those teams together? because I've seen the result of not planning for decades. You know, hundreds of thousands of people, they would come into the office and at 62, at 67, or when their loved one just passed or they've got kids or whatever. And, you know, you, you depend on Social Security and, you know, hopefully Social Security is gonna continue. I, I think it will, you know, it's, it's, it's important enough, but it, it doesn't cover everything. It, it was never intended, you know, I mean, you know, the average, burial, you know, what, $10,000 or something. And Social Security gives you $255. So come on. Um, so that's why I put together a, a team of people that uh, do life and burial insurance and stuff. So uh, yeah, so I've all, all the gaps, I'm trying to fill all the gaps that Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and all those. So I'm, I'm trying to help you with all those. And putting together teams to help you with all of the gaps and all of those. So if you want that type of help, just uh, give us a call at the 888-817-0446. Uh, uh, leave a message and uh, my son will uh, coordinate all that. Uh, let's see, can you do a video that focus on parents who get social security for children with disabilities? Anything should we know when the parent goes over $2,000 limit? Yeah, that's a, uh, um, yeah, I have, I'm, I'm looking, thinking back on all the videos I've done. Yeah, I don't think I've done anything like that. So that's a good one. Um, um, so parents, social security for children with disabilities. So we're talk, probably talking about an SSI. Yeah, um, SSI, children. It's funny, the, uh, um, you know, the, the office I ran, that we had close to 100 employees. And uh, basically, it's in three units. So you've got the we'll called the CSRs, the customer service representatives. Those are the people at the front windows. You know, you know, need to change your direct deposit or you know, where's my check and stuff like that. <clears throat> and then you have Title II. That's Title II of the Social Security Act of 1935. Those are the people that do you know uh, SSDI insurance, Social Security Disability Insurance. Those are the ones that do, you know, retirement, survivor benefits, you know, spousal benefits and stuff. And then you have Title 16. Title 16 is SSI, Supplemental Security Income, the needs-based program. And I was Title II, but I managed SSI units and all that kind of good stuff. So, um, yeah, I'll, we'll definitely, uh, it's, it's a completely different entity. Um, it, it, it's in the same office and everything like that, but the parameters and the reconsiderations and the, uh, the, the reevaluations that they do every, yeah. And again, it's a, it's a welfare-based program, needs-based program. So, you know, they try to, you know, make sure people get it, that only people that need it get it. So, Gary, thank you. Ed. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Social Security told my husband he was overpaid, so they stopped Social Security. Two years later, we received a letter that 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 has been paid. A few years after that, we he passed, and I got a letter from Social Security that he still owed. Need a refund. Wow. Yeah. There was a uh, a big um, um, 60 Minutes uh, story. Uh, Anderson Cooper did it, you know, the, the, the famous uh, Vanderbilt son, uh, Gloria Vanderbilt son. So Anderson Cooper did a, uh, uh, a story on overpayments and uh, yeah, overpayments are a nightmare. It's Social Security 
takes too long to make the decision and they make wrong decisions sometimes. And so I did a video in response to that because Anderson Cooper, the people he interviewed for the story, Social Security got out, reached out to them and they deleted their overpayments and stuff. And so the headline for mine was, you know, Anderson Cooper can't save everybody. Um, but yeah, watch that video on overpayments. Um, if you have an overpayment, then there's a couple of ways you can do it. You have, you can file an SSA 632 or a 561, or you can do both. A 561 is a request for reconsideration. That's the same one you do for any type where you want Social Security to reconsider a decision. So basically, they made a decision on your overpayment, and what you're saying is, I want you to reconsider that decision because I think you're wrong, and I think you're reading the policy wrong, and I think you know you calculated it wrong, or whatever the case may be. And then an SSA 632, you, again, you can do these both at the same time. A 632 is a different thing. That's a request for waiver, where you're saying, okay, you know, it, 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 it may or may, you know, you say I owe 10000 I say, oh, you know, I owe 1000 uh, Whatever you turn out to be, I can't pay it, so I'd like it to be waived. But in order to get it waived, two things have to be met. It's not your fault, and you don't have the ability to repay it. So those are, those are the two hurdles you have to jump. Um, you know, it, and the whole not your fault thing, that's, you know, if, if, if like some, you know, millionaire, you know, obviously is overpaid and it's, you know, it's, or it's not their fault, but they still have the ability to repay it. And social security still wants that money back. It says, yeah, it, yeah, it's not your fault. We overpaid you for whatever reason. It's our fault. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you make a million dollars a year and, and it's $10,000 pay us our money. So, so those are the things that, uh, yeah. So it, super long story short, all my, stories are long because this is a bureaucracy anybody that gives you short answers out there they're leading you the wrong way um so i would recommend um filing either one or both of those again a 632 or a 561. so they put you on a payment schedule for four years at 50 dollars a month okay so that's uh um if you still disagree with it you know so you know you you protested it good good um but if you're still in the back of your mind thinking you know that should have never been an overpayment then file the 561 and uh you know that won't affect your your overpayments you know schedule that you're doing and stuff um and if they determine that um yeah you're right that should have never been an overpayment they will pay you back all that money so if you pay fifty dollars you know a month for 10 years and then you know you fight it and you know you even go all the way to the administrative law judge and the judge says oh yeah no this should never um you know been an overpayment that they have to give you all that money back if the judge says yeah give all that money back and the one thing about uh um social security judges and overpayments is most of them are not very good at overpayments in, in terms of calculating all the overpayments and the how much this and how much that they are depend they depend on social security employee to make the case in their documentation but often they don't so administrative law judge law judge often just says well you know, i don't understand this and the information that the social security employee in the local office provided me I, that that doesn't help at all so usually they just yeah all right, forget about it. But it takes a couple of years. This is all insider information. Don't tell anybody any of this information, okay? You all promise, all right? Okay. <laughs> I'm showing you how the, uh, the sausage has been made. All right, good day. Uh, let's see here. Scott, what are the guidelines for spousal benefits when my wife is a year older than me? I am retired from the military and both of our working on 20 years for a second retirement from the VA. Thank you for your service. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see here, probably Air Force. Usually you say when you retire from the military, then people, that's usually Air Force. People say I don't retire from the Marine Corps. People who retire from the Marine Corps say they retired from the Marine Corps because it's, because they're, not all there <laughs> i know 
Um, all right, let's see here. Yeah, um, hopefully you watched the video I just put up yesterday because this explains it all. But um, in, in the second part, uh, actually, yeah, the one I put up a couple of days ago probably doesn't. The one I'm putting up today does. Um, but uh, yeah, she's older than you, retired from military. So yeah, I, I don't know if you have non-covered pensions because you're working for the VA or anything like that. But no, you can, uh, um, as uh, Cadillac Jack was talking about, you can do a split strategy or you can both file at the same time. It really depends what your PIAs are, your primary insurance amount. And if there's any more money on one record versus the other. So there's basically, you know, four filing strategies um, that you can use. And that that video, I'll, I'll put that up um, in the next few hours. So watch those uh, those strategies. So they didn't discharge any overpayments received during the pandemic. No, not, not, no, not, you know, they discharge, you know, every day, you know, always, but not specifically pandemic related necessarily. Yeah. Um, what is the formula? Uh, I'm going to stop there <laughs> to math. Uh, for taking Social Security off of an X. They told me without looking at my account that he has to be paid twice. Yeah, so basically, yeah. As as you saw in my video I just put up, hopefully, um, that person, your spouse or your ex-spouse, has to, their PIA, their primary insurance amount, basically what, you know, they would receive at their, you know, full retirement age, has to be twice as much as yours. So if their um, benefit amount or PIA is 1000 and yours is 500, you know, then there's nothing left there. If theirs is a thousand and yours is 400, then there's a hundred dollars to play with there. So if you file it for retirement age, then you get an extra hundred dollars off the spouse claim. $2,200 a month of illegals get after they enter the US. Yeah, don't get it from social security. In order to get money from social security, I can, you know, because yeah, I can, vouch for this because I've done it hundreds of thousands of times. You have to have uh, legal residence in the country. Yeah, and it's, it's, I had probably the most difficult case. I had a guy from Cuba. He was, God, what was, I forget the terms they use, lawyers. He was in the, he was in America lawfully, but not legally. And I forget which ones the difference is, but basically, um, he wanted his benefits. He paid into Social Security for you know at least ten years, so he had benefits coming to him. But he had to prove that he was in the country legally, um, and he couldn't. He was in the country lawfully, but not legally. And the reason is is because um, he came over from Cuba, and unfortunately, he he molested a child. Um, so they're saying, oh yeah, we're kicking you out of the country, but they couldn't kick out him of the country because he was from Cuba and they couldn't return him to Cuba. So he was just kind of in a, kind of a holding pattern. And because he wasn't in the, he was in the country lawfully, they're allowing him in the country because they couldn't return him, but he wasn't in the country legally. Um, so we couldn't give him the money. So, so when people say legals get money from social security, then yeah, that's all. Sorry, not correct. Um, my stepfather lost all his identification, birth certificate, social security card, and ID, and is homeless. How do I go about helping him to get his life back? Yeah, wow. Number one, thanks for stepping up there. Um, Malachi, um, Hawaii, Aloha Spirit Man. Um, but anyway, um, let's see here. Um, yeah, that's always the tough thing because you know, you go to Social Security, you get a Social Security card, and they say they want to see your, you know, some type of picture ID, and then you go to, the, you know, the DMV to get a picture ID, and they said they need your Social Security card. Each state is a little bit different on that. Um, so, um, usually it starts with a DMV. You go down there, and you get some type of ID, whether it's a driver's license or just a, you know, regular, you know, ID, um, non-driving ID. Um, and then once you get that, then you go to Social Security, you get your... Um, you know, you get your uh, social security card and a birth certificate is not proof of ID because, you know, in some states I could get, you know, your, you know, ID, I could get your birth certificate. 
you know, do a FOIA request and get, you know, anybody's birth certificate. So, and because it doesn't have your picture on it and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's a part of the evidence that can be used, preponderance of the evidence. So you've got, you know, like a birth certificate, any type of, you know, life insurance, you know, uh, official, official documents or anything like that. Um, so I would start at the, uh, the DMV and tell them your situation. And then once they're able to do what they can do, then you'll, they'll send you to Social Security, get the Social Security number, and then you can start, uh, you know, getting the birth certificate and all the rest of it. Um, and I wonder if he's, is he receiving Social Security benefits now? If, uh, yeah, so hopefully get that filed. And maybe SSI, if he's not working, he, he's not insured, um, he's disabled or something, then uh, yeah, SSI, as I was just talking about, that's the, uh, the welfare-based program. What is a U.S. Treasury 310? I don't know. Can you help people who are on short-term disability who were just told they need to file for SSDI? Um, well, yeah, I don't represent uh, people in front of Social Security. I tell them how to work the system and navigate the bureaucracy, but... Um, yeah, if you're on short-term disability, um, if, if you want to file for SSDI, make sure you watch my, my video. It's one of the first videos I did on about a year ago when I started doing these crazy videos. I'm working on um, a super long disability series now that uh, should take about a week or so, multiple videos on all things Social Security disability, so you can uh, wait for that. But uh, yeah, I would, uh, you know, call. But, you know, you said short-term disability, but Social Security doesn't, there is no short-term disability for Social Security. Your disability has to prevent you from working, and it has to be some type of disability that's going to last for a year or longer. So, or end in death, as they say, unfortunately. Um, 2155. I asked the DAC question yesterday. Rep told me I could be penalized because I did not apply for DAC when I filed for SSF years I applied. Well, not penalized. You just won't get the benefits. So they're not going to take anything from you, you know, necessarily. But um, yeah, I could be penalized because I did not apply for DAC when I, you just won't get the benefits if they determine they're not going to be able to go back. Um, but um, if you, I apply for Social Security online. Um, so it didn't, you probably didn't have an appointment. So you probably called the 800 number or called your local office and talked to, again, one of the, I hate to call them the lower level employees. They're the, they're the, the least paid and the hard, hardest working in my estimation. Um, but for your particular case, you, I would recommend, here's my recommendation, I would file and say, hey, um, you know, I wasn't told this, I was getting incorrect information, um, you know, the, whatever the case may be, and then have an actual higher level claim specialist make the decision. And then once that person makes the decision, if you still disagree with it, do what I just, uh, you know, mentioned, um, the, uh, you know, request a reconsideration and all that kind of good stuff and have someone reevaluate it. It's going to take time, but... Uh, you know, if uh, it's a disabled adult child, um, then they could be on benefits for, you know, for decades. So if it takes you many months or a year or two to, you know, finally get everything set up, then I, I would argue it's worth it. Um, do SSA see your income in the system or do they see it after taxes are filed? Yeah, they, um, yeah, the, the system, uh, Social Security, once you, you know, do your self-employment taxes or your employer, you know, sends out the W-2s, they send all that to the IRS and then the IRS sends that to the, the Social Security computer system. So, um, we don't get it until the IRS, you know, until you actually pay those FICA taxes to the IRS. Once that happens, then, you know, then Social Security gets word. CJB 63, is it 10 years you had to be married and got divorced to collect their social security? Yep, 10 years. And uh, yeah, as I, I, um, I, I try to include, that's why my videos are kind of long and people say they're boring, is because, you know, it might be boring for you, but, you know, the information I'm talking about at that particular time might be important for other people. So, 
You're like, yeah, we get on. It's not relevant to me. Well, I'm sorry. There's more people that are watching this video than just you. Um, so um, the the video I did, you know, might not be a lot of people this pertains to, but one of them is I've seen this. People were married to one person for six years, and then they get divorced, and they're saying, "Wow, I guess that person's not as bad as I thought they were," <laughs> and they get remarried to that person for another, you know, six years. So Social Security can actually put those two together and come up with 10 years. So yeah, a lot of people don't know about that. And I'm sure there's hundreds or maybe thousands of people out there that are not receiving benefits because they say, well, I wasn't married 10 years. Well, did you marry that guy twice? Yeah, so. Um, all right, sweet bug, hey, sweet bug, how you doing? Um, I met a lady that worked all her life under someone else's social security number. They told her to start over with her own number. She is a senior and start over now. She would never do that. Yeah, that's, uh, um, um, yeah, that's, uh, someone was talking about, you know, illegals, undocumented, uh, uh, you know, immigrants, whatever the case may be, whatever you want to call it, um, potato, potato. Um, we used to, that's probably the most common thing if someone worked under the incorrect social security number or something. And that's, you know, people that come into the country and they, they work illegally and they work under a fake social security number and um, the employer pays that person, you know, it's the employer that hired that person. So anyway, um, so that person works and pays into social security and they will never get that money back because they're not, they can't prove their legal status in the United States. But, you know, after however many years they file for naturalization or, you know, they, they, they you know, do the, do the right thing and become, you know, residents and whatever. And that happened, you know, a couple of few times a month. Person would come in and say, yeah, I've been, you know, I was working under the table or I was, no, I was, I was working illegally under a false social security number for, you know, 10, 20 years. And now I'm legit. And I've got a brand new social security number and then social security would take, you know, confirm everything and say, okay, yeah, that, that was actually you doing that money. And you're, you're legit now. So they take all those earnings and transfer it over the new social security number. But you know, that, that was, you know, probably one out of, you know, a hundred or one out of a thousand that were doing that. All those other people that are here working, you know, not working correct, not that are working illegally. Um, paying the Social Security and they never get their money back. So actually it's good for us. It's, you know, there's probably billions of dollars in the Social Security Trust Fund that is there because of illegals paying to the system that they will never, never get back. So there's that. Into the Social Security system, at least. Sandra, 2014 husband and disability passed and was 54. Sorry to hear that. Uh, today, told I wasn't old enough for widow's claim. 27 became disabled. 2023, they filed widow's disability in me. How far back does this widow's disability pay? Yeah, it really depends on your protective filing date and everything. So yeah, based, um, a disabled widow's benefits, DWIB as we call it, a disabled widow's benefits, you can get that from 50 years old until 60. So they have to determine you became disabled, um, you know, during that time frame. And uh, yeah, so... It, it really depends on when they find you disabled. Um, and if, you know, I did a video on this and I, I tell everybody, you know, that this is probably the, the, the one secret or that, uh, uh, that you really need to know is protective filing. Um, you know, I found, you know, millions of dollars of people with protective filing. Protective filing is basically if, you know, you get some incorrect information or you schedule an appointment and you don't show up and then, you know, six months down the line, a year down the line, whatever the case may be, then you, you know, walk into the office and do X, Y, or Z, and then they start your benefits when you walk into the office. Protective filing is, hey, you called us, you know, three months ago or a year ago, or we gave you incorrect information, you know, six years ago, whatever, um, you know, we, you know, we can go back because you're protected. That is a protected filing. We might be able to go back and pay you those back pay, pay you that back pay. So, uh, 
in your particular case, you know, I would check it out. Thanks for all your advice and help. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, da, da, da. Have you done or will you do a video walking through waiver and other forms? Yes, yes, that is, yes, yes. LH, thank you. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I did one on uh, uh, Medicare Part B, the, you know, the special enrollment period for Medicare Part B, you know, when people stop working, um, they have to fill out a couple of forms, a 40B and a 564, and I did a video on that, but uh, yeah, I really need to do uh, uh, videos on, you know, pretty much, you know, the top, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 forms to uh, show you how to do it. Um, yeah, but those, you know, those are, you know, those are probably like, you know, 75, you know, views and stuff and, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah. Microphone's really glitchy. Oh, sorry about that. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm charging at the same. Should be. Let me, let me close my. I'm gonna bring a little bit closer, and then I move back. Um, all right. Let's see here. Uh, Dr. Weir, if you moved out of the oh, something, if you move out of the country temporarily, can you cancel your Part B premiums? Um, you can. You can cancel your Part B premiums anytime you want. Um, but yeah, then you've got the penalty and then you won't be able to sign up until it's, you know, the, the general enrollment period from January, February, March, we're actually in a, an enrollment period right now. Um, so if for some reason you didn't sign up for, you know, part B when you should have, this is an enrollment period right now that you can sign up. Um, this is the only time you can sign up for part B if you're in that category, January, February, and March. So if you sign up, you know, call them up and sign up for Part B, your Part B will actually start uh, next month in April. And if you're using this general enrollment period, then that's probably because you didn't do it, you know, when you should have. And there'll be a penalty and stuff, but um, at least you'll have that coverage. And this is also uh, in terms of uh, Medicare supplements, Medicare supplements and Part D and prescription drug uh Part D percussion drug and Medicare Advantage. This is also a special enrollment period. Oh, it's not special. It's the OEP, uh, uh, open enrollment period. So if you signed up for a Medicare Advantage plan, for instance, that you don't like, um, and you know you lost your network or whatever the case may be, then you have a few more weeks to switch. You can only switch one time during the open enrollment period. So if you want that, uh, um, call my uh, Medicare team at 888-817-0446. I also, I'll have the phone number down in the, uh, the description down there, but uh, yeah, call and uh, leave a message. And my son, um, he'll, uh, he'll get your message and he'll forward it on to someone. Oh, leave, uh, make sure you tell us what state you're in because um, all the states are different, so. And then we'll have, uh, he'll have someone from our Medicare team reach out to you and, uh, yeah, get you squared away. Uh, da, 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 Robert White, that's why I got an SSI attorney that fights for an SSI, but it's taking a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's some good attorneys out there. I, my personal, I always avoid t talking bad about attorneys. Um, but you know, the, 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 national ones that do a lot of advertising on TV and stuff, you know, there's, yeah, they're not a lot of great customer service. Um, I'm putting together slowly, but surely I'm putting together, um, a list of attorneys. I've, you know, seen the actual claims cause I've, you know, I've seen hundreds of thousands of, you know, disability claims and, and a lot of them coming, th you know, from throughout the country. And I've seen some of the cases that some disability, you know, they're just, you know, just calling it in, um, not doing a great job. And uh, so I'm putting together a list of uh, disability lawyers I would recommend. But it, yeah, it's a, if you use a lawyer or don't, it still takes way, way, way too long. I just did a video on that. It talks about the, you know, the 10 worst places to live if you are, you're on disability. Savannah, Georgia is number one because it takes what, I think it's uh, 22 months um, yeah, I, I, I do videos like that sometimes to poke a sharp stick at Social Security and say, hey, 
um, you know, try to expose a little bit, and that way they Savannah, Georgia, because you know the, the the staff in Savannah, Georgia, hate it too. Um, so, but if we give exposure to stuff like that, then the politicians come down, and hopefully, the, you know, the politicians from Georgia or get embarrassed and they give more funding and more staff for those particular offices and it helps the offices and it helps the people in disability. So that's why I do those, uh, um, you know, kind of embarrassing videos sometimes to help out Social Security. Um, beauty rest. Uh, my friend was married to a U.S. citizen. Could she apply for Social Security from his working years even though she lives in Germany and has no Social Security number? Um, it, again, she would have to be a uh, some type of you know U.S. citizen or legal resident. Um, Germany, uh, um, it really. It, I'm trying to think. I think Germany. Yeah, they're they're called totalization agreements. Um, so totalization agreements are agreements that Social Security, uh, the United States government has with other countries. I know there's like Japan and I think Germany, Italy, France, England and stuff like that. But they're all written a little bit different. So you can go on to the Social Security website and it's called um, Payments While You're Overseas and you just answer a few questions and it'll and it'll say what country do you live in and um, can you collect benefits overseas and it'll tell you but you can collect benefits overseas but can you start the benefits overseas so in order to start you have to be again a US citizen or a green card holder so Um, okay, I had a disability lawyer. Would it be wise to contact my lawyer and let them? Yeah, they're working for you. You know, they're, those, those guys are going to get $7,200. Um, if, if you're up to $7,200, 25% of your back pay up to $7,200. They just changed that and added another $1,000. It's funny, the, you know, disability lawyers, they're, you know, they're able to get really good COLA increases, um, you know, because they're lawyers. So anyway, um, but uh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you can always change lawyers, too. If, if you feel for whatever reason that, you know, your current lawyer is not doing your rights, you know, you have, you know, the, the right to change lawyers. And you just have to call your lawyer and says, yeah, you, uh, I'm going to go with somebody else. Thank you. You know, um, yeah. And you just tell the new lawyer that, hey, I had another lawyer. And so because they have to worry about, you know, maybe a little bit of payment on, you know, some of the payment might go to the first lawyer or second. Yeah. So but. Yeah, if you're not happy, you can switch. What kind of penalties? How much, uh, Betty? Let me see, Betty. What? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so you're talking about Part B. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, you get 10% penalty for every 12 months you do not have Part B. So if you're in, if you're entitled to have Part B at 65 and you say, well, I'm not sick, I don't need health insurance, and you know you wait a couple of years, then you'll get 20% penalty for the rest of your life. So for Part B and a penalty for Part D, the prescription drug plan. Um, uh, let's see. I signed up for Advantage and do not like it much. Can I select supplement plan in California? Yeah, um, California is. Uh, um, there is a company that uh, um, I wonder if they're doing um, a, um, a health underwriting holiday. So call my Medicare team at 888-817-0446. I'll put it in the description, that phone number. Um, if it's not all there already, I'll put it once I finish the live here. Um, and it's also in my other some of my other videos, the phone number. So give them a call and tell them you want to switch to a supplement, which is the ones I recommend if you see any of my videos. Um, but, you know, you can do that when you're 65 and other special times as well. Um, but if you do it outside of that, you have to go through medical underwriting. You don't necessarily have to take a medical exam or anything like that. Just to, you know, um, call my team and they'll ask you some questions and uh, see if they can find you a plan, a Medicare supplement plan. So, and then they also have to get you a prescription drug plan. Um, so, how are you, Michael? Hey, good, good. Hey, every day above ground is a beautiful day. Oh, okay, uh, Michael, yeah, started his new job. Yeah, so he was work uh, uh, men's fashion. 
Yeah, I remember uh, when I worked at uh, Polo Ralph Lauren when I was going to uh, University of Hawaii there, I got out of the Marine Corps in Hawaii and so um, they made you buy, they made you wear everything Polo Ralph Lauren, um, which means my first three months checks <laughs> went to buying clothes. So what are you going to do? Um, Jan, is it easier to get social security disability when you're old enough to retire? I'm in Michigan. Um, yeah, state doesn't matter, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, um, yeah, it, it's easier. Um, you know, again, you, you have to file before your full retirement age, because after your full retirement age, there is no disability. Um, so yeah, the, the, you know, the adjudicators, the people that make the decision on disability, you know, the, they're seeing if you can go into the workforce, whether you can work. And as we slowly get older, then that's more difficult. So sometimes it is easier. So if you're kicking this around now and you're not working um, or you're not making above the, you know, the, you know, 11, 12, 13, 1400 dollars a month, then file, you know, call, file, because it takes forever. As people can attest on this. It takes forever to get your uh, claim approved. So every day you wait, that's another, you know, <laughs> months. You know, anyway. Um, recommendations, recommendations for appealing uh, social security disability insurance. They say I was overpaid in California. Please let me know. Um, appealing SSDI. They said, okay, so not appealing the SSDI, not appealing the decision on the disability. You are, you're already receiving benefits and they said you're overpaid. Usually uh, that involves work. You we're receiving disability and you were working, which you're allowed to. Um, I'm gonna include that in my long disability video coming up. Um, but uh, yeah, um, again, same type of thing. Uh, watch my video. It's the SSA 561, the re request reconsideration, where you say, I want you to re reconsider my overpayment. I don't think it's accurate, or I think it only should be half. And then the SSA 632 is, okay, I owe, let's say but I want you to waive it because I don't have money, it's not my fault, or I want to set up a payment plan. Uh, Green Whiskey, if you win the lottery for less than a million, do you have to get off Social Security? Um, if you can make, yeah, click on the little button down there, in the description, buy me a coffee, a beer, if you win the lottery, buy me a six pack, nice, uh, nice bottle of single malt whiskey, um, yeah. Um, but to answer your question, um, if I don't know what to, what type of, if you're receiving retirement survivors, spousal benefits, dis SSDI, social security disability insurance, then no, doesn't matter. Unless you're a professional gambler and your job is to play the lottery, then maybe I don't think anybody's job is to play the lottery. Um, people's job is gambling, playing poker and stuff like that. That's their job. And so that's considered work. Um, so that's, uh, but uh, um, yeah, if, but if you're on SSI, supplemental security income, which is the welfare based program, then yes. Yeah. They will, because uh, again, it's welfare and uh, they will say you don't need welfare because you just want a million dollars. Uh, let's see here. I found out that the underpaid it in it is just good, like you said, but you already knew that they said they owe me 20000 They told me the max they said they owe me twenty. is this after the attorney fee. Um, yeah, it really depends. Yeah, so they can, uh, so if they if they approve whatever your disability and they go back and say, okay, we're going to approve it, we're going to approve it, you know, as of, you know, 20 months, 10 months ago or whatever. Um, yeah, so you'd have to... Uh, yeah, it really depends what the letter says. So again, they, you know, if it can be up to 25% or up to, you know, 25% up to 7,200. So uh, where does the charge for Part B benefit the beneficiary? Of the, where does the charge for Part B benefit the beneficiary? Of the, yeah. Uh, let's see here. I'm not 65 and I'm on, I'm on SSDI and 58. Uh, let's see. I'm currently receiving Social Security. Do I get to select when I retire or is it forced date? Um, 
if you're on SSDI, Social Security Disability Insurance, then you're getting what you would have received if you waited till your full retirement age. So, you know, most people don't do anything. You don't retire because you're already, you know, if you retire at 62, then, you know, you're going to get off disability and you're going to get a 30% cut. And, you know, if you, you know, want to go back to work and work more than what disability allows, then I guess you could do that. You could tell them, I don't want disability anymore. I want to file for retirement so I can work. That's a possibility. But uh, yeah, if you're on SSDI, then you're on SSDI. Um, once you hit your full retirement age, they will switch you to retirement, regular retirement. And, you know, nothing will change. You'll get the same check and same amount of check and everything like that. So nothing will change there. All right. Let's see. Thanks for responding to my question. I hope they all look into my case again and don't come back with questions yet. <clears throat> Let me see. Has there ever been a reconsideration done that it came back more than the amount they said it was? Yes. Yes, yes, good question. I should have added that. Yes. Um, just with anything on a reconsideration, you're asking them to reopen the case and look at it again. So with a disability, you know, people say, yeah, I just got approved for disability, and uh, but they only give me five months back pay, and uh, it should be a year. And you can, you know, you can argue that. And say, no, I want you to reconsider. But you have to know that that means they can reopen the case and say, well, oh, who, wait a second, who approved this? This should have never been approved. And yeah, so that's the risk. But if you know you're right, then, yep. Um, how do I get a job and live in a shelter while working rent-free and then find a place rent-free? Um, I don't know about all that, but I would definitely watch the video I did, the four-part series on how to live on Social Security alone. It's it's not for, you know, just people on Social Security. It's people, all people throughout the country that are struggling. There's, what, 48 different programs, pi private and public, that uh, um, that might be able to help. So I would watch all four of those videos. And uh, <laughs> as everybody has taken me to task, I apologize for the super, super slow, long introduction in the first video. So just skip through. You know, if you don't want to hear it, just skip through it and then start with number one. The other videos have like, you know, very, very short introduction, you know, 20 second introductions. So I learned my lesson. Sorry. <laughs> I think it's my introduction to what I was saying was important. And I know the people I'm talking to because I've done this a few million times. And sometimes you have to repeat yourself and sometimes you have to talk very slow because that's the audience I really want to reach out to. And other people, hey, you're talking too slow. Well, okay, well, you're not really, you know, okay, whatever. Um, let's see. Big Matty Boy. I had a small part in a movie in 1988, and every year I still receive a W-2 for about $30. So are residents considered um, residuals? No, no. Yeah, I had a guy that uh, he was the uh, judge in Casino, you know, with Oscar Goodman there and you know, and then, uh, yeah, the, uh, Oscar Goodman, the, the mayor of Las Vegas, you know, he was the, the mob lawyer, and he was in the movie, but I took the retirement claim for the guy that played the judge in that scene, and he had the same thing, but no, that's that's not considered current work. That's residuals from a long time ago, um, so that doesn't account, that doesn't count against you in terms of the annual earnings limit, You're, so... Oh, thank you. Big Molly toy. Uh, appreciate it. Buy me a buy me a coffee. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ever heard of a band called Tool? Of course I've heard of a band called Tool. I'm not that old. Thanks for the answer. Tricky, huh? Yeah. Good day. All right. All right, let's see what are the questions. We'll uh, do uh, one or two more questions, and then, uh, and then we'll call it a day. I think what you're doing by answering questions and giving professional advice is super sweet and kind. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, uh, I can't believe I'm doing this whole YouTube thing and doing it live and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people out there need help, and I got all this crazy information swimming around in my head, so I might as well do something with it.
Alright. Alright, we got a bunch of kids popping up here and asking crazy stuff. So this is a day of mourning. The creator of Dragon Ball Z passed away. So uh, all the kids out there texting me, they will know who that is. He was kind of a legend in the anime and manga world. So yeah, I am the original otaku. I am otaku OG. So for you guys out there. Uh, da, da, what else? All right, looks like uh, that is all the questions. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's end it for today, and uh, y'all have an awesome weekend, and take care of each other. Bye bye.